Okay, we're going to talk about um, dealing with oxidation in raw wood. So I've brought today a guitar that, I'm sorry, a piece of the guitar that demonstrates that pretty well. We have several cracks where um, the wood's opened up and over the decades it's been exposed to air and darkened. So one of the things that is commonly used to lighten that is oxalic acid. It's this marvelous stuff. Um, mildly toxic, not too terrible. Common sense warning, you know, don't expose your skin to it over a long period of time. It can be irritating, don't drink it. But we're gonna use it in a pretty clear, straightforward way to lighten oxidation in a light colored wood, in this case, in a spruce guitar top. All right, so to mix it at the right um, approximate ratio, I like to use about this much water and a scoop or two of the crystals on my spatula. So that's enough, actually, a big scoop. We'll mix it up. Some of it doesn't dissolve, not a big deal. We'll just leave it at the bottom. I should mention you can get this online. It's not hard to come across. So this is the first thing I'm gonna address, this, this crack here that goes from the um, corner of the bridge up towards the waist of the guitar. Um, another good candidate for oxalic acid is this pickware here, um, where the finish has been thinned down and worn away. And you have a lighter but a more homogeneous oxidation of the wood here. So we'll start off with this crack and we just let it, let it soak in. Wet the whole area. Two brushes I've used today are, um, the first one is an angled eyeliner brush from Sephora, actually. Um, just has this angled tip and a pointed bristle. Uh, get real specific into the crack. The second brush is from a craft store. Um, it's just a stiff bristle stencil brush. It allowed me to do that scrubbing motion on the pick guard area. And this should start to lighten up nicely. All right, here we're getting a closer look at the two spots I'm working on. I'm gonna work on, on them a little while longer and then I'm gonna set them aside for about 20 minutes or half an hour. We're gonna come back and see how things are. One repair that I find myself doing on vintage instruments is replacing a brace or a bridge plate. On the inside of a guitar that's had decades to oxidize and gain a patina and get to be this really nice homogenous sort of warm caramel color, um, you know, obviously it's gonna look out of place. This is a piece of spruce, probably Sitka. You can see how extreme the difference is with this raw fresh wood next to this wood that's been oxidized for probably 100 years. This guitar is from about the turn of the century. Or it was until, you know, about two weeks ago. <laughs> so I flew here to the Northwoods Guitar Seminar um, and rather than bringing a, a guitar with me on the airplane, which we all know is kind of a crapshoot, I decided the best way to bring the money part of the guitar, the part I wanted to demonstrate with, was to remove the top. So I used a violin purfling cutter and went, literally just went around the sides of this cool old guitar and I took the top off and now I can do my demos and it packed right into my suitcase. So uh, we are gonna use potassium permanganate today to oxidize this raw, fresh piece of wood to, to get more in the family of this patina. Um, a little bit about potassium permanganate. It's an inorganic compound. It's also known as permanganate of potash or Condi's crystals or fluid. Um, Condi was Henry Bowman Condi. He was a sort of a patent medicine fellow, fancied himself sort of a scientist or a, a doctor. Um, he sold it as Condi's fluid and it was used to, um, uh, for, for disinfecting water, to distill and clean water for drinking purposes, which is a little hairy to think about knowing what else we know about this, because not only was it used to treat fungal infections like candida and gonorrhea, it's also highly explosive. If you mix it with sulfuric acid, it becomes manganese oxide, which is really volatile. Um, and if you mix it, with, mix it with glycerol or other simple alcohols, it violently combusts. Don't do that. Um, common sense warning, avoid getting it on your skin or ingesting it, of course, even though it looks like it would be delicious, you'll see in a moment, it's actually not. And I'm gonna mix a light batch now because a lot of times you really like to have a lighter batch and you can control it more by doing um, multiple layers. 
So I'm gonna take about this much on the tip of my spatula. I like room temperature or lukewarm water. And I'm gonna let that dissolve. It gets this really wonderful sort of uh, bluish violet color. It's quite pretty. Looks like Kool-Aid. Like I said before though, don't drink it. I'm just gonna evenly saturate this piece of spruce. You can see as I paint it, the color is turning from this really intense magenta sort of violet into this brown and getting closer to the color of uh, the natural patina, the inside of this turn of the century guitar. To avoid this sort of thing, this cupping, wet the opposite side as well. So then any swelling that's gonna happen on one side is also gonna happen on the other side. And it's really a fantastic little trick. This is one coat of, uh, of a, a more dilute potassium permanganate, and this is two coats of potassium permanganate as it's dry. And you can see these pieces of wood, um, when viewed next to the inside of this top, you can see we're really starting to get somewhere as we go this direction. The really marvelous thing about treating wood in this way is it's not been stained or dyed, or there, there hasn't been color added, it's actually been oxidized rather than painted. So that's part of the wood. What if you've pushed the potassium permanganate a little too far? You've oxidized your wood darker than you had wanted to when you started. Um, pretty cool, a way to deoxidize wood is with oxalic acid. And I'll show you on this piece of maple that I had previously stained, how we can pull some of that out. Um, so I'd stained it several times from very light to dark with the potassium permanganate. And now I'm just gonna draw a stripe along one edge We'll watch a lot of that come out. Even though it's wet, and so it's darker than the raw wood would be, you can see that that dark oxidation is already coming out. I'm just gonna dry it a bit so we can see better. Yep. Pulling out. So now we're going to check on this work after it's dried. This crack that's extending from the bridge up towards the waist has come out nicely. I'm happy with that. Um, still a crack, of course, so this is not the end of the road for this, for this piece, but uh, the color is much lighter. The oxidation is largely gone in a lot of it. Um, as far as the second spot where all this pickware was, it's much more subtle. Um, this is the sort of thing that doesn't always work all that well, but I th from where I'm sitting, I can see that there's a difference. So I'm gonna continue to work on this because I think I can get it to come up a little bit better. Then all I have to do is come up with the rest of the guitar. We'll be getting somewhere.